Hello everybody and thank you for joining me for another injection pump video. Today we're going to be addressing a major concern that I see pop up with building these MTDI pumps and that is if a 17mm pump main shaft will break if you use it in an MTDI application. Anyway this is going to be a very deep dive so expect some advanced terms, acronyms, and even some math. Let's get into it. In the Volkswagen world, the VE injection pump came with two different diameter shafts. You can either expect a 17mm shaft on the 1.6 liter models or a 20mm shaft on the 1.9 liter models. And the debate comes when you try to combine these pumps to make a mechanical direct injection pump. And if sources are to be believed, a 17mm pump will snap clean in half if used in an MTDI application. So just with this visual comparison, you can see that that 20 millimeter shaft is stronger. But this isn't a debate on whether or not the 20 millimeter shaft is stronger. This is a debate if the much more common 17 millimeter pump is strong enough. Let's see if we can prove it. So I could not for the life of me find any evidence of these 17 millimeter pump shafts breaking. In fact, whenever these VE pumps do seem to break, it seems to be either roached out rollers, cams, seals, bushings, or just some sneaky invisible thing that's really hard to pin down. Hey, get a load of this. Here is a broken cross disc. That's interesting. We'll come back to that one later. Welcome to Statics Nerds. <laughs> that's right. It's Professor C's Get Degrees himself here to lay a little bit of book learning on ya. In all seriousness though, this is just some quick back the napkin math in order to put some estimated numbers to the sort of things that I hear people talking about all the time, and I definitely would not take any of the math that we're going to be doing near in the near future as gospel. Anyway, back the napkin math, like I said, and that means we're going to be doing this on a big old pile of assumptions. The least of which are, the pump is static. Well, basically what I'm going to be assuming here is our main shaft is clamped into a vise, and that's it, and we're just putting a torque on it. I understand that when you are running the thing and you got all the little, all the load going, the heat and everything, it might be a much more different problem, but it is also a much more complicated problem, and we're not going to be solving for that today. I'm going to be assuming that the torque is the only force on the part. If you wanted to get really nitpicky and draw yourself a little free body diagram of our main shaft, there's things like the torque from the belt, but we are just going to be considering the torque through the shaft. We are also going to be assuming that the material is uniform. Like any shaft, you can locally harden it in some points, or it could be hollow. We're just going to be assuming a uniform material. On top of that, we're going to be assuming a yield strength of 250 megapascals. This is on the low end of mild steel. And if you remember from your material sciences class, yield strength isn't actually when the thing snaps in half. It's just when you start doing permanent damage from bending it. So we're going to be calculating the yield strength, which is not quite the same as when the thing actually breaks. You have a little bit of leeway. You could put some more torque on it before it actually snaps. All right, let's get started. Let's see if we can't calculate our yield stress torque for that 17 millimeter shaft. So the formula we're going to be using is our torque at yield over J equals our shear stress over R, where J is our second polar moment of area, which is this bad boy for a circular cross section. And let's get that out in some nicer terms. So our torque at 17, we can get everything else on this side, factor in that J, and then we have a diameter and radius. We can get that looking a little bit nicer by just canceling out the radius and getting this formula. All right, let's put some numbers to it. So for 250 megapascal, pi, 17 millimeter cube over 16. And we can do a bit better than that. Let's get it into some friendlier units. So a megapascal is one times 10 to the six Newton per meters squared. And then we're putting our shaft in terms of meters and doing a quick unit check. We cancel all these out and we see that this formula ends up with a unit of Newton meters, which is a pretty good sign that we're doing things right. And if we calculate it all the way out, our torque to hit our yield stress is 241 Newton meters 
or 178 foot-pounds. And I, I want to stop you right there because 178 foot-pounds is more torque than an AHU makes. Now, that's net torque, obviously. Maybe, possibly, that 178 is being drained out of it. But I highly doubt it. And keep in mind, this is if the thing is completely constrained and you're just torquing it. The actual operating torque of a functioning injection pump should be considerably less than this. Anyway, that was fun. Let's do it again for a 20 millimeter shaft. We'll just spare you all the math and we'll just do some numbers. So for our 20 millimeter shaft, we have 392 Newton meters or 289 foot pounds of torque. And that's quite a difference. So that's more than 100 foot-pounds more just by scaling up our shaft by a couple of millimeters. And that is because this has a cubic relationship with diameter. So you just add a little bit of diameter and you can end up with a much stronger shaft. So yeah, as we can see from these calculations, the 20 millimeter shaft is considerably stronger than the 17 millimeter shaft. But at 178 foot-pounds to hit yield, again, yield is not the same as braking, I just want to show here that uh, the 17 millimeter shaft is not exactly glass. But uh, all I'm really doing here is reaffirming the 20 millimeter shaft supremacy. So maybe we should go a step further. Maybe we can find a different weak point and maybe the true weak point in this injection pump. And maybe it isn't even the shaft at all. So how about this? On the other side of the shaft is, I'm going to call this the coupler end. We got these teeny little teeth. And I mean, that looks kind of weak. Maybe that's a weak point. Anyway, let's prove it. Let's go ahead and calculate it on out. So if we're going to be doing this calculation, we got to add a couple more assumptions to our list. We're going to be assuming that the coupler teeth are square. They're not quite square. On the outer diameter, it actually is a diameter. I'm going to say that the force is applied at the center of the teeth. If the geometry isn't uniform, it could all be at the leading or trailing edge or somewhere else, but we're just going to assume it's right in the center. And we're going to assume that this is a pure shear formula. Again, this is a torque changed to a force and direction, which is the definition of torque, but you know, they're not 100% the same in the actual mechanism. So we're just going to be assuming a force on the teeth. Anyway, let's go ahead and do that. For the shear formula, it's a lot simpler. It's just the force equals the shear by the cross section, but we want to do a torque. And of course, because these are offset, we're gonna introduce the little radial component of them for how far the teeth are offset from the center line. And there's two of them, so don't forget that. So let's plug in all these numbers. Again, we got our 250 megapascals and then all of these can be measured out from our shaft and there's two of them. So do all that math and we got 326 newton meters or 240 pound feet of torque, which is interesting how that shakes out. So in terms of strength, our weakest is the shaft when it's 17 millimeters, then it's the coupler for either, they're the same between the two of them, and then the strongest is the 20 millimeter shaft. So at this point, there's really no reason to have, say, a 21 or 25 millimeter shaft because at this point, our weak point is going to be our coupler end. And I could say that with pretty strong confidence because we've just been going through and talking about just the shaft. And if our assumptions hold true for one, they hold true for the other. And while numbers might not be the same, this will pretty much scale depending on, you know, what kind of steel post-processing hardness is used. So that hierarchy of 17 millimeter coupler to 20 millimeter shaft is something I can say with pretty strong confidence. So if we could stop thinking about shaft thickness for a second, let's look back to the cross disc. That's that piece we actually saw broken a little bit earlier in the video. Maybe that is our true weak point. The cross disc is actually a piece that you're supposed to change if you build an MTDI pump. So that could be the weak link. Anyway, for our calculations, we're going to be doing the same pure shear formula. And for our A, we're going to consider our cross-sectional area to be that little area where it broke. And doing the math, we end up getting the torque to yield for our cross-section is 195 newton meters or 143 foot-pounds. And that is the lowest. The thing here is, though, 
our sticking point is this number right here. It's tough to say when looking at that cross disc, it almost looks like powdered metal, but I'm gonna say it's cast. And the issue with a casting is it has a very wide range of strength that it could be. So, um, so far we've been just comparing apples to apples with our shaft and everything has been uniform through the shaft. But now we got the cross disc, our assumptions are compiling and I've just thrown quite an orange into this comparison. Rather than have two you know, completely unrelated assumptions for material yield strength. Let's go ahead and correlate them so we would know how much stronger our cross disc would have to be in order to not be the weak link. And these have a linear relationship, so we could just get a conversion factor like this. The easiest way to do it is with the torques. It's a little counterintuitive, but trust me, it does um, calculate out that way. Put in some numbers, and we get 1.24. So that means our cross disc will have to be 1.24 times stronger than whatever metal is used in the main shaft in order to not be the wink link. Is that completely out of the, the realm of possibility? Not really. It's just a design consideration, but it is showing that uh, more than likely, and all things being equal, the cross disc will be our weak point. Double goes for if we consider the 20 millimeter shaft. If we put some numbers in here, we get 1.67 for our conversion. So the cross disc would need to be 1.67 times stronger in order to not be the weak link, which that is a lot less doable. That, um, that means you'd have to have a pretty good casting compared to a pretty mediocre shaft metal. So in all likelihood, in at least the 20 millimeter pumps, the cross disc is our weak point. So what did we learn from all of these calculations? Well, just from running the numbers, we found that the, t the cross disc is the most vulnerable part in the pump. It's not necessarily the weakest. You just need to have considerably better material properties in it in order to match the strength of even the 17 millimeter pump. So it is the most vulnerable to failure. Also, we found that it actually takes quite a lot of torque to break a 17 millimeter shaft you know, 178 foot-pounds is nothing to sneeze at. And another, one of the big things I wanted to prove here was that these 17 millimeter pumps are likely not the ticking time bomb that they are made out to be. And another interesting finding from these calculations are that for a 20 millimeter shaft, it's not actually the shaft that's the weak point in just the shaft, but it is the coupler. So that is our limiting factor, and there's no point in scaling up these main shafts to be any larger. Once again, this is all based off of my back the napkin math, and I really just kind of want to start a dialogue here and throw out some of my own information into the void. So if you have like a picture of a 17 millimeter shaft snapped in half, I you know I'd love to see it. Let me know <laughs> let me know what kind of insights you have onto this. And if I'm just completely wrong here in what I've calculated out and what I've shown, I want to know it as well. So leave a comment. Let me know what you think. So moving away from the math, if in all likelihood the 17 millimeter shaft is perfectly fine for these VE pumps, why would they have gone to a 20 millimeter shaft at all? Well, like I said, you can't even break the 17 millimeter shaft with a stock TDI, but you know, these VE pumps are used in a lot of other things. Uh, the 6BT Cummins is something that I can think of that had it, and it doesn't have this nice weak break point of a belt either. You get something jammed in that gear drive, I could see you uh, breaking that shaft easy. In fact, the decision to move from the 17 millimeter shaft over to the 20 might not even have anything to do with the torque at all, like we had assumed. This might have to do with the supporting load in order to keep things like the belt tension and the side load in check. You see, when you take a look at the 20 millimeter pump housing, it is actually considerably larger we have a lot more area and support and bushings holding that shaft up than we do on the 17 millimeter side. So it probably wouldn't be a good idea to take your 17 millimeter pump, slam it into a lathe and hog it out to get the benefits of the 20 millimeter shaft when all the benefits might actually be from the support in the housing itself. But who can really say? Anyway, thank you for joining me for what I hope were some slightly coherent ramblings. 
as I put pen to paper to try to interrogate some of the assumptions I've seen on this topic. And in the words of Adam Savage, The only difference between screwing around and science is writing it down. So consider this video to be my formal hypothesis. 17 millimeter shaft is perfectly adequate. And the TDI that I got in my project car to be my test. And uh, should my hypothesis not hold true, you will see for yourself. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was informative. You learned a little thing or two. And if there's anything you could school me on, by all means, drop it in the comments and learn me up. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and have a good one. Shoots.